Trying to get back into contact lenses. But my eyes are just really not suited to them anymore. So I need to wear them more to get out to readjust. You know, that's a really interesting topic. I'll talk about that in a minute. I'm gonna write that in a notepad because I have a very short term memory. Uh, You know, I wish my um, notification box worked. So I feel like we're getting to the point where my streams are feeling more streamy. Because um, I've got like the text coming up and stuff like that. I think if it was really nice, it feels like it's turning into a proper stream. It's taking me long enough. Um, but yeah, it feels like it's turning into a proper stream. But my um, one of the biggest issues is my... my um, what's it called? Uh, do I even have it on it? Maybe it's because I haven't got it. Uh... Oh, is it because I haven't got it? I, I used to have it in Streamlabs, but OBS is the only one I can stream on multiple platforms. Because, Well, I can do it in Streamlabs, but it costs money. And, and unless I was earning more from this kind of stuff, I feel like it's a waste of my money, as mean as that sounds. Um, that YouTube icon looks so out of place without anything wrote first. Let me write something. Uh, let's get the Twitch chat out. That should automatically discover that. What's up? How's it going, Tony Montana? Tony Montana, damn. Um, yeah, not too bad. We're just uh, we're UV mapping. Oh, I've just finished UV mapping the cannon off stream, so now I'm uh, I'm ready to. Oh, I've got these skulls as well. I'm ready to get that on. See, something I could do is I. I I, I'll probably set this out, separate this out into four different material subsets. Uh, we'll have these skulls as a separate material. Then we'll have these two parts as a separate material. Uh, and then I'll probably just do four 2Ks. So essentially it'd be like having one 4K map on the whole thing. I am. I am wrapped in a blanket, but not unwrapped. Hello first. Hey. Hmm. Is the J pronounced J? My name is Tony. Oh, hello, Tony. We've got Tony Montana. Tony Montana is the name of, um, am I crazy? Tony Montana. Yeah, Scarface, right? Um, hello, Tony. My older brother's called Tony. I, don't, I never feel like, I, <laughs> I think I was uh, top of my older brother at one point. So I shared too much information, um, with like my stream and stuff. And I don't know how I, how I feel about that because like, it just doesn't bother me. I don't know. I'm Tony. Oh, you are Tony Montana. Right, right. Is your last name Montana as well? Are you actually Scarface? I know I could be rotated the wrong way. So that's been one of the most detailed assets I've made in quite a long time. I don't tend to put a lot of time into assets because I'm an environment artist. And as I've described before, being an environment artist means you need to dedicate the time. 
I was in Twitch. I came to YouTube, right. I want a smart game, mate. You want a smart game, mate? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're doing like 3D art, I lost train of thought. Do you think games are getting boring? Hold on a minute. I literally was talking about this yesterday. I feel like I'm missing something here. I'm missing a joke. No, games are not getting boring. I think people are getting boring. It sounds a bit mean. Uh, I think people are growing up and realizing patterns in games and it tends to bore them more, right? Like if you play FPS games and you're on your 50th FPS game, the game fundamentals are still going to be the same across all games. You're still pointing and shooting and killing what you shoot. Um, I don't think the games... It's not smart anymore. You think the games themselves are... I don't know, man. Have you played indie games? I think the biggest problem... Almost everybody I know who tends to think games are boring... Even YouTube videos, you'll notice they only talk about AAA titles. Now, what people seem to forget is AAA titles never really existed 30 to 40 years ago. And you say, oh, what? Yeah, they did. You had all these companies. Yeah, but they were so small, they were comparable to uh, indie companies today. The, indie co the AAA companies of back then are like indie companies now. Because not only were they motivated and had innovation of what they were trying to make, they were smaller and they were much more passionate groups of people. Uh, which is what an indie company is now. AAA companies now are corporate. Um, it's just a big company. Is saving a file as a GLTF useful for importing into Unreal rather than an FPS file? I have never even heard of a GLTF. Hold on a minute, Martin. Let's have a look. GLTF. File. Maybe I have heard of its full name. Set a file format for... It's a standard. Standard file format. Three-dimensional scenes and models. A GLTF file uses one of the two possible file extensions. Oh, I see. Uh, I've never ever in my life heard someone export as a GLTF. So I'm going to say it might work. Um, up to your own discretion. What you feel like is if, if it's if it, if it works fine, go for it. Um, at the end of the day, you're rarely going to export stuff from the actual engine. So if you're if it's in there, it's in there. And if it works, it works. Um, I don't think. It's any more. It's probably uh, maybe maybe you've got some reasons to why it's more useful. I can't imagine it's any more useful than ex importing as an FBX or even as an OBJ. Uh, OB the reason FBXs tend to be a bit more favoured OB over OBJs is because their file sizes are much smaller, um, and they also can carry over uh, textures, texture information in the file. I think that's true, right? Are uh, FBX files smaller than OBJ? I know the texture thing is true, but I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, no, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. A OBJs are smaller because they don't have that extra information I just said. They also can't carry over animation. Uh, right, so no, um, maybe that's why people like OBJs, because they're smaller. I want an AI smarter than human, I got bored. Um, I mean, I think the problem is you just, you just won't... Well, especially for a very long time, so I won't find that games. Because any there was actually something ah, oh, what was it? It was a Japanese experiment years ago, or a Japanese theory about AI is never truly intelligent. Um, and I want to I want to find it. It was a really good uh, little read. AI is never truly intelligent. I don't. That's not what the actual study was. Intelligent Japan uh, theory or Japanese theory. Artificial intelligence can never be intelligent. It was like something called the box theory. Um, and I really want to find it. I can't remember why it had sites to do with a box, but I definitely remember there being a box involved. I think the theory was that an AI can only do what tasks you've allowed it to do at the end of the day. So even if you've given it all these tasks and it's all of this availability, it will still only respond to things dependent on what you've basically programmed into it. So the tasks that it do will never be biological. It will never be an actual independent thought process. It will always be something that is being programmed into it. Thus meaning it will never actually have sent sentience and it will never be technically intelligent. Um, and I thought it was really interesting. I, I probably butchered it a little bit in my little summary. But that was kind of what it was talking about. And I was like, that's really interesting. I did answer him. I, I don't think... Um, 
Is saving a file as GLTF useful for importing into it? I, I, I don't know. I think it's up to your own discretion. If, you, if it's a smaller file size, if it, if you get better results uh, in the Unreal Engine when importing it, you know, I, I don't, um, I don't actually know. FBXs are pretty much the standard in the industry, so there's got to be a good reason for it. Um, I use them because it's it's standard. I mean, does Blender even have the export setting? Oh, grease pencil. I didn't even remember that you could do that. Oh, yeah, you can. So it, it is a thing that you can export as. But I just know FBX is relatively standard. I know that um, ZBrush only recently started allowing you to import uh, FBXs. Uh, anyway, so we're going to... Um, what we're going to do is we're going to import this. And we're going to make sure it's a separate material. So let's actually call these small skull. Large or oh, just canon because it oh, whoops that's nice for canon it's canon it's canon double n because otherwise it's canon like a story canon um yeah that looks good now if we select this this and this i think we'll be good at importing that oh wait right so what i need to do is i need to export fbx go into Uh, Canon files, yeah. Uh, Canon top with uh, small skull, low poly. Copy that. Uh, I should have exported that. Now let's open another Blender document. We want to go file. Oh, whoops. File, open reset. Canon half. I accidentally clicked off it. Canon half. Don't save. Because this is where we're actually exporting stuff from. I don't know why when you export stuff from out of ZBrush, it raises off the ground. And I don't know why. Um, but I need to do it in here because this is where I've got stuff. I've exported low polys from FBX into here. So now I need to align what I've just exported from Blender back into here. Really annoying. Um, cannon top with skull small. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's it's offset. I I don't know why, but it's fine. We can just reset it. There you go. And then I can export that now into. Uh, that should have come in with its separate materials, right? Get rid of that one. Oh, hold on a minute. Why's the skull not got material on it? Let's go. Cool. Now I should be able to export that as one mesh with four different materials. I learned yesterday about a built-in plugin in Unreal Engine for GLTF. Okay. I mean, let's have a look. Uh, GLT GLTF versus FBX. Both are widely used. Really? Widely used? I can't think of a single time I've exported site from a project in the Unreal Engine. Uh, from either somewhere I've worked or a project I've downloaded um, and it's come up as that file type. Um, at a high level, the FBX file format is better than the GLTF if you're transferring your data to a game engine like Unity and the Unreal Engine or between 3D tools like Clara.io, never heard of that, Maya or 3ds Max. Is there a follow-up to why GLTF is better though? Uh, both of all of you, yeah, yeah. Uh... The GLTF format is better than FBX if you want to transmit your 3D scene data efficiently over the internet for viewing in a remote application, such as for purposes of augmented reality. Okay. Um, so for games engines, it seems like it's a clear cut. Oh, FBX is better, but we can look at it elsewhere. Um. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, Letterborn. How are you doing? I'm chilling in a blanket. I've all, all unwrapped my entire cannon, which is fun. Oh, is this the same site? Oh, it is. Uh, debate topic when it comes to rendering 3D assets, which file format is the right one? There are pros and cons depending on the user and the intentional, uh, intended application. Updates and innovations are cropping up all over, all over up all the time. Which is, this is the first in a 10-part series. 10-part series? Talking about... Oh yeah, FBX3D, OBJ, step, 
gift first. FBX. Oh, so his last one was the right gift. Whatever. Oh my god, I didn't see the blank here. I always, <laughs> I always, always, ha I also always have one. Jeez. I love putting a blanket on myself. I've always said to people when they buy me presents, I was like, if you want to buy me something, you don't know what to get me, get me a blanket. No one has ever bought me a blanket in my life, even though I've said that to people. I mean, people don't tend to buy me stuff anyway, but. Where should. Here you go, pro. So, yeah, it's all to be default for mainstream 3D modeling packages. That's because the file type is the oldest of its kind. Oh, is it? I never knew that. But was it because it employs a flexible text based language? This makes it good exchange. Cool. Um, yeah. So you, you basically won't use OBJs if you have anything you want to transfer over with the F, with the model. So if you've got textures uh, assigned to it, or if you've got a rig assigned to it, you definitely won't use fbx's which uh, definitely won't use obj's which means you'll probably end up using an fbx for everything because it's just easier to remember not to have to change over because that's al always the easiest thing isn't it it's like a lot of people will only use png file formats not because um they are better by default i think ext is a really good file format personally because you get uh, a lot less um bit ratey uh stylized textures they, they they come out with a red color um Color spectrum. I, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but they look kind of bitty if you get close. Whereas an XTR, X, EXT, I keep saying different letters. EXT? File format? No, that's just extension EXT. E, 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 R, X? I can't remember. It's in substance. I'll get it up in a minute. But it's a really good file format because it produces those. But the problem with saying like PNGs is one, they're smaller than that kind of file type, and two, it just means you'll never forget to swap to it if you're trying to do like a transparency thing right so making your default the one that works with everything is not necessarily the best choice it's just the easiest choice because if you're having to make five models a day and you keep forgetting to swap back from png to i don't know jpeg um so i think that's the case of like fbx's is they support basically everything you tend to want to do with a model so it's just become a quite used file format for that purpose if I ever somehow come up, I'll buy you a blanket. Hot, hot damn. That's amazing. I'd love a bl another blanket. I've already bought two recently, but don't get your hopes up. <laughs> ah. Um. Yeah, it tends to be. Oh, what well, tends to be larger than other. Oh, hold on a minute. I just read earlier that they're smaller than FPXs. I think it's really that big then. I've never heard a step before. Uh, pros. Whoa, that's a lot of pros. Uh, most important strength is versatility. Yeah, there you go. That's exactly what I said. Uh, FBX still can include a huge uh, variety of data types. Models can be encoded with skins. Skins? Does that mean textures? That's a really weird way to put textures. Animation data, bones, hierarchy, lighting. Oh, yeah. I forgot you could have the lighting in that. And material attributes. Oh, maybe skin. Oh, does skin mean weighted skin, maybe? Um, be much more complex. Works with CAD files. Faster to read. What does it mean? Oh, okay. Uh, battery data is also easier to integrate. Nice. Uh, closed file format, which works with official. Yeah, right. Okay. While well, the format offers plenty of modeling features, some of the standard supports are becoming outdated. Really? I've never heard that. Um, how to use the FBX file format is great for moving 3D models. Uh, yeah, game dev. Wait. And works well with older game dev, uh, like the Unity on Unreal Engines. So let's see the pros of this one. So yeah, good with web browsers, which is what we read earlier. Uh, the format is also speed advantage over the other 3D formats. Models files can be five times smaller. So yeah, it's small. It will work as transferring. It would be really good. Um, it can handle animation. Nice. Uh, yeah, web. It, it keeps saying about web-based stuff. So that's apparently really important if you want to use upload it to websites. I hate research so much. What like I'm doing right now? Oh, my headset's dying. Um, image quality can be an issue. Ah, it's not ideal format for high-end game development. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So Martin King, apparently, it is not the ideal format. Uh, for high-end game development or special effects in the film industry, the models it stores are compatible, comparable to FBX. Sorry, in their quality and complexity, and lack key features like shader networks. Okay, 
is not optimized for 3D printing. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, STL. Oh, is that what? That's not what Stray was, was it? Oh, Step. Sorry, no. Stray coming out with random terms now. So yeah, I don't. When, when it comes to me talking about stuff, I always just go with what the general public use. I, I've never heard anyone to even mention uh, GLTF before. So, but I've heard fbx everywhere so i'm not the kind of person who will go out my way to use different file types because i think they might give a minor advantage um so that's just that's i i would always jump on the bandwagon when it comes to this kind of stuff because there's got to be a reason people are using that i know it's not very innovative for me to say that um but no you want to really work out and try to find the best of everything but i'm just not <laughs> I, I, I got to spend my time getting better at 3D modeling and stuff rather than deciding all these little small things. So I'm just more of a generalized. I, I pick whatever's the most versatile, which is what I described with like PNGs and FBXs. But after reading that list, it does seem that for game development, FBXs seem to have the edge over most other file types. Uh, what was I doing? Right. So hopefully this will just work, fingers crossed very being very hopeful right now brock steve i am dming you something okay i sent whisper on twitch i see the whisper uh if you said I mean, all you sent me is bro, right? I'm, I, I assume I'm not missing something. Uh, file. Recent files at Canon Base New. Oh. Oh. Let's uh, hope this isn't broken. Aha, here we go. Cool. So that's our normal base. If you file, in. Uh, no, not import. Project configuration. I wonder if it'll let me do this. Hopefully it will. Oh my god. My sister's paint has been really uh lacking recently. I don't know why. Uh oh, uh, it seems to be working. So that should get the textures all based on here. Nice. And then I just have this part. Sweet. That looks awesome. I yeah, I saw that the UV maps. They're not the best in the world. I can improve some of the scaling here. And I can take, definitely take up some space. But it's it's fine for now for what I'm looking to do. Um, oh. No, no, no. You're allowed to do that now, uh, Tony Montana. I won't completely reveal what you've just said. Well, maybe I will. I mean, it's, it's not like it's too much of a secret. But... Uh... Um... That was about three months ago. Uh, here. Sorry. Uh, it's, it's really important though. Because if other people come into the uh, chat. And uh, talk about this. I, I appreciate your um, concern as well. Like you obviously don't want to see me. Uh, uh, be brought down. Because of what I'm doing. Um, but as you who've won who may be wondering. Why I'm now streaming on both platforms. The last couple of months. is because Twitch very recently about january 13th yep january 13th they declared that you're allowed to uh stream on as many platforms as you want at the same time as twitch it used to not be like that it used to be you can only stream on like if you streamed on twitch you had to wait 24 hours before uploading whatever vod you made um onto other platforms now they completely uh raised that limitation which is brilliant uh because i i like twitch but my viewership on twitch was always really lacking whereas youtube even if like i've got 10 watches now it's brilliant um, but even if people weren't watching my live streams people would uh tune into my vods where they wouldn't do that on twitch either so some days i'd only have two viewers um and i know i should be doing it for the viewership but at the same time i i want people to join so i want to help them if no one even knows i exist it's pretty hard to do that whereas my twitch my youtube already had like at the time ten thousand subscribers Oh, yeah, th thank you so much, Tony, for helping. Like, it's super nice of you to even consider uh, me in that regard. Like, to consider that um, I maybe have got into trouble. Um, but, yeah, like, uh, so now that I can stream on both, it's fantastic. Because I, I kind of get the best of both worlds. 
Um, I probably should stream on Twitch and substream on YouTube, though, because you can't do a lot of the commands on Twitch that way around, where YouTube doesn't really have any commands. So I might actually swap that over. Oh, yeah, that's, that's fair enough, Tony. I, 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 yeah, you're right. That's a very. It was definitely a better choice to whisper just in case. Twitch sitting in the background like, hold on a minute, he's streaming on YouTube too? I'm going to put on some beard oil on stream. I have no idea how you apply beard oil. Um, but I just put a little bit in my hand and then I just rub it in. <laughs> And then it gets your hands all greasy. All right. I like how my viewership went up by three people just then putting beard oil on. Uh, so next thing I want to do is I need to... I can use that as my low poly technically right now. Or like that it's going to bake from. Or the high poly it's going to bake from. Uh, because I do want to separate out the wood parts and actually do a high poly of the wood parts specifically in ZBrush. But I don't need to do that right now. That can come later. So let's select the two skulls that I actually want to be baked. Yeah, bruh. Baked. Um, and then I want to subdivide them so they look like so this is what they look like right now in a uh, project this is what they should look like after baking so we export that FBX and then we'll go I've got so many files here but um, this is small scale HP this isn't out of the ordinary that's why you have I don't often do this with my stuff because, again, I make uh, environment props. And when you make an environment prop, you tend to just want to get it quickly and done in no time. Five hours or less, in my opinion, to get an environment asset done. If you, Because, obviously, if you're trying to make 100 assets, it's 500 hours. That's already quite a lot in time. Whereas, I've probably spent... I, to be fair, I've been very lazy making this. This is If I sat there and properly did this, maybe 10 hours. But 10 hours per prop, if it's 100 props, is now 1,000 hours. But this is just a... Um, a prop I'm doing for fun. If this isn't going into an environment, if it was, it will be a big focal point. It'll be like the, it'll be an important asset in the scene. Um, I'm very talkative today, Jesus. Uh, oh, that reminds me. I was going to listen to Sank while I, while I work. So, yeah, we've got we've got the, uh, the skull. The last thing I want to do is I want to grab just this, and we'll use this. We'll just call it um, Canon Bake High Poly because we're just gonna put it in just so it bakes everything correctly. Oh, the partnership changed January thirteenth. I, I I just sort of saw that. Maybe that's not the right thing. I'll admit. We've gone running out payouts for creators who have hit. Oh no, that's not the right thing. Running here receives Sut no. Oh. It was not the Changri 11 thing. Where is it? They have it. Because if you actually look at the uh, partnership exclusivity page. Um... <sighs> They've not changed it here. But it says partner affiliations are allowed to create live content on other platforms. This means that you have flexibility to explore blah 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 off platform features. But they changed it very recently. No, no. They, unless they reverted it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitch has lifted its exclusivity agreement and now allows partners to create live content for other platforms like YouTube and Facebook. Uh, Twitch partners who must meet certain criteria to monetize their channel and access uh, have been long bound to exclusivity agreement that only allows them to stream on Twitch. It was never actually... That's not fully true. You could upload your VODs 24 hours later. Um, so on Tuesday. So when was this? August. So... It would have been like August 22nd or something. 
Science Today, you are allowed to create live content on other platforms. Yeah, and they basically lifted the uh, exclusivity. So excited on Twitch live streaming to build a community. We still believe that Twitch is the best place for creators to build and engage with the community. We also recognize that the digital landscape, digital landscape has changed since we first introduced the partnership program. And we have the engagement. Uh, um, although Twitch will no longer enforce the exclusivity agreement, streamers uh, on competing web blah, 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 support blah, 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 while also streaming on, uh, on the platform. Wait. Services that support uh, while also streaming on. Oh, alright, let's talk about that. Uh, Oh, apparently you're not allowed to. Oh, well. What? I swear I read recently. I saw, like, a video on it. But they still aren't allowed to uh, simulcast on other sites while using Twitch. I swear. Because I looked into it not long ago. Unless I uh, missed an even recent one. And I stream on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. Uh... Do you know, is instancing messed up in UE5? As in, like, fairly edge instancing. I mean, I don't really mind. If they if they ban me on Twitch, I wasn't using it anyway. So it's not like it bothers me, if I, even if I do get banned. But, um... Twitch now lets partners stream on rival platforms. Let's see. I'm so confused. I read this on their official page that you're allowed to. So where, why can't I find it now? Let's go uh, last year. Ah. But the rule was never against not being able to stream on Twitch and YouTube. You could always stream on both. You just had to stream different content. Um... I am affiliate, but again, I don't really care if I lose my affiliation. Like, barely anyone watches me on Twitch versus YouTube. Uh... I'm finding really mixed information on it. People saying you might you now be able to co-stream on both. Oh, well. Apparently people are saying that they do it and they've never been caught, so. Twitch. Hey, moderate. I mean, my people in my channel were saying just stream on both anyway. What's the harm? Because, yeah, they want, like, uh, you don't really use Twitch anyway. I already did it, didn't I? So let's come back into here. Let's go Canon. Bake. Taking, is it? Have I got it? No, it's on my desktop. I was like, have I got it on a hard drive? Why does it take so long to load these things in? Uh, and we want skull, small skull, high poly. There we go. And then if we bake that now, we should get all the baking for the, the actual thingy. got its shading and everything effects on it looks very good uh, if i rebake down here now as well 
which I think is this one, yep. I can rename, right? Oh my god. Why is it freezing when I'm trying to just rename something? Something has been so weird. I think it updated recently, and ever since then, it's just been so odd. There you go. Base. Large. Go. Small scar. Hold on a minute. Why have we got two small scars? What's going on? Oh, they separated. Wait, no. Here they are. Well, that's not what we want. That looks hilarious. I, I could actually just keep that instead. It's not high enough uh, resolution, unfortunately, but which is why I made it a separate model. Um, so, hold on a minute. I They were separate. Right, I see. I see, I see, I see. All right. So, these are joined together. Rid of that. Now, we import it. Uh. So, wait, wait, no, now we want to go project configuration. What's next after this model? Probably just going to go back to the, um, the Simpsons scene. Um. So it's, uh, oh, there you go. Nice, nice. I, I'm worried that it's going to mess up materials. We seem good. We seem good. So now the small skulls should be a separate, both of them. Sweet. Now if I... I should technically be able to bake the entire thing and get a result I'm looking for. It might take a while. But if I go bake, we'll do it at 4K and everything. We'll just go... We'll sit here and we'll say bake. And we'll see what kind of results we get. But again, I want to separate out the wooden parts on the cannon, which is probably one, two, three, four five small parts i want to separate them out and i want to do a high poly for all of those um because obviously wood is a very specific material and i want to kind of hand do it to give that handmade effect We wait. Hold on a minute. Oh, did you retract all the messages to do with uh with what we were talking about? Oh well. Like I said, it doesn't really bother me that much. I swear I read somewhere that you could do it, so I'm I'm very confused why I can't find it now. Um Maybe I'll just come off my affiliate. Because that's the only contract I'm breaking if it's still a thingy. No ping. Oh, yeah. I did everything else. It's because there's so much setting up.
Uh oh. What happened to this? What was red on this before? Because if I do that, we'll get our color back, right? Oh no, we won't. All the hand-drawn stuff's gone. Hmm, interesting. Um, that was after baking. That's very strange. So let's go file. So wait, I, I kind of want to check if the skull worked over here. Oh look, it's too close to that. We're getting a uh, weird bake. I probably actually don't need, hold on a minute. I probably don't need the bake one I put in. Cannon base, HP, skull, kind of fake. But that should look higher poly. If we go into the light, small skull, I'll do this. Oh. Oh, wait. Did I bring in... Oh, I think I imported the high poly. Whoops. Oh, I've been... Oh, Jesus. I mean, you could automate it for Twitch at least, maybe. Yeah, to be fair, I should have automated it ages ago. I was too lazy. Uh... I considered buying substance, but I feel like I, I buy too much stuff these days. Unfortunately, my student license expires. Cute skull thing. Thank you. It's not working correctly, though. Um, okay, let's reopen this. Get rid of what we just did. Because I want to... I'm confused why the base would have broken after what we just did. Again, it's running really slowly. This is not a intense thing for it to load, but recently... Oh, hold on a minute. Did I save it when I imported it? Interesting. So that's what it's supposed to look like. Which is which one? So it is this one. So if I import... Oh yeah, I've imported the high poly skull. So let's... uh, I'm supposed to do the low poly skull on our first export. We want to go cannon, mirror. How many polys is this? That's not right. Because then I get only 28,000, but like this, I get 200. Like. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, so is it because of the mirror? I think the bottom's mirrored, though, and the bottom is an intense. And what's this? Because this is only 24,000. That's like the whole meat of it. Oh, is it because of those as well? I didn't... Uh... Right, right, right. I've not low poly both types of skulls. Okay, that makes sense. Right. Now we're looking at a much more believable. So 32,000, that's quite believable. Still pretty high. It is going to be... It would, like I said, in the scene, be a proper vocal point. So it's not too out of... Uh... An imagination to be 30k for something like that. I could optimize it a lot more. I just can't bother. Cool. Now we want you. I think I already got you, but we're gonna go just in case. Small skull HP. Steam is the way to go. Perpetual license, and you can just forget about it. Yeah, I think perpetual license is the way to go most of the time. I, I. I was really, 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 really into perpetual licenses uh, back in the day. I'm definitely less. I'm talking too much. I don't know why I'm. I, I was thought I could listen to a podcast while I'm streaming. I cannot. I'm too much. I'm too focused on talking. Um, I like. I used to be super, super into perpetual licenses. I'm a little more for sub, sub subscription based things, uh, but that's only because they make the perpetual license sometimes ridiculously more expensive. Like a perpetual license will be like. 
five to ten years worth of the cost of just subscribing for a year at a time i'm like that's so that's huge because i feel like the idea of a subscription based one is you should only subscribe and you need to use it at least in the 3d field because you're like with sunset paint i'm sure you're going to use that very uh, often but it's like zbrush i do not use zbrush every week at work not even a little bit uh so we actually scrubbed that monthly every single month but i could technically backlog stuff and then just do the work to save money um one at a time so yeah i, I think it's sometimes really crazy how much they charge for the perpetual licenses but i mean at the end of the day they can charge what they want it's their software it's like the reason these games are being made and earning money is because of their software so can i can i blame them for it i don't know I think that's a completely completely different discussion yeah my that's my problem as well is upgrades uh like when they upgrade and get updated and stuff it doesn't even look like it's getting much better um and i think that can hold true to an extent with what moderate's saying is like this is substance paint area even any better than it was like five years ago which i don't think it is like i i, I use this as painter and there's nothing in there that i'm using that i think is any newer now than it was when i first used it so let's just bake the base and hope it doesn't break things. i don't know why if it wanted to break something it should have broke it when i pulled it all in but why is it breaking after a bake so let's get rid of the fake cannon which is the fake fake high poly and let's quickly just do like a 1k. I just want to see what happens if we bake just the base. It kind of looks really cool just with the ambient inclusion on it. Oh, is it good? Oh, there you go. Jesus. Why did it? Sit on that for a while. So what's happening? So what what is this layer? Positional. Oh, because we've raised the entire thing. Oh, I see. Right, so we need to make it tighter and lower. Because it's taller, the position has shifted. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, okay, okay. That's fine. That's fine. We, fi we fixed it. <laughs> um, we always have the height. One of the heights. Is that that one? No. I think I have a height one, don't I? Double. Is that positional? No, that's not positional. Oh, no. That seems to be it. Oh, is it that one? No, that's just Z direction. Yeah, world aligned. Uh, not positional. Okay, so I don't have a positional for that direction anyway. It's fine. Uh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. As long as I know what was causing it. I still don't know what's causing these two little hiccups here, to be fair. But I can always fix that in the normals afterwards. Before being poured into another piece of software. Uh, cool. So we're, we're looking good there. So let's do a rebake. And again, let's sit here. Let's just do 2K for now. And let's just tell everything to bake. Oh, let's redo the high poly score to make sure it's fine. And that's... Oh, wait. That was the wrong one. I was just a small high poly skull. Whoops. That's hilarious. That's such a, like, random issue, isn't it? Like, oh, what's causing this? Oh, it's it's just that. It's just the height. It's higher now. At least I understand why it did it, though. That's, um... I say about you don't need to understand a lot of stuff in doing 3D. But if you understand small things like that, like, oh, why did this break? And you can identify... It's kind of like QA, right? A QA too lazy to be lazier yes exactly my cool man i just realized you wrote that from earlier um oh that's a trade of thought uh oh yeah yeah um it's really important because like with a qa for example my like my q at the moment in my company they're not because sometimes you'll go like when i work with a german company sometimes you'll meet people and they're they're part of the qa team and they are literally people who are striving to be programmers and they are really really good at identifying exactly what's Anyone stream drop keeps dropping out. Oh, maybe it's the um Oh yeah, oh my god. Whoa, hold on a minute. Jesus. Are we are we good now? Um 
Let's go into here and take go substance paint and take some processing away from it. Where is it? Is it not called substance painter? Oh, Adobe. Of course. Gotta tack on the word Adobe to make sure they know you know it's their software. Right, that should help a little bit more. Oh no, not the space. I wanna know if I've dropped out. No one's replied to say, no, you're fine now. Yeah, we don't seem to be lagging too heavily now. I'm back. Okay, okay, cool. Um, yeah, yeah. It was, I talk about QA, for example, the same sort of premise. If you've got a QA that's really good at being QA, then they... Are someone like in, in the German company work for they were striving to be programmers um they will be able to they, they won't just tell you like oh so i walked up to this wall and my character just flung into in, into the abyss and you'll be like oh you know do you know do you know what could have caused that no i was just jumping up and down but if you're talking to them and go oh so i squeezed myself between a gap and it basically what what i could tell it looked like the uh, collision boxes were basically being squeezed together and it forced the character to be overlapped on top of the other collision box forcing them out of the environment uh, that'd be my best guess and that's really helpful now for the person who's going to try to fix it Ah, oh, what why is this broken now what is going on maybe i do need the uh do you need the low poly that i had in kind of fake high poly let's try that again uh it's the same when i figuring out like just earlier um, I discovered I moved the height slider, but I first went, what could be causing that color to be changing? And I found the color that's changing it. Then I thought, okay, what is that one doing? And it was height. And then I moved the height and went, oh, it's because the thing's taller now. The height is higher. Yeah, there was an issue, but it's gone now. Well, one big problem that was happening with our company for a bit was for some reason, the QA just kept not giving us video footage of anything. I was like, you need to, like, the programmers are complaining. Uh, I I was getting annoyed at some things, but it just kept not giving me video, video footage. It kept sort of describing it, but my QA at the moment aren't, they're not striving to be programmers. They're not striving to be developers. They're just, and they don't have much um, in know-how of why things break. They kind of just play it and see that things are broken. And they're getting better today, to be fair. But um, I was wondering to just say, oh yeah, this thing broke. Well, do, do you know what happened? Oh, I was just walking there and I, it broke. Yeah, but what happened? What happened to the character? Like, did the camera move out the environment? Oh, yeah, yeah, the camera went out the environment. I'm like, K why didn't you say that in your first statement? Uh, and then I I've got asked them. This only happened a couple of times with me, the programmers that do it a lot. Um, ask them like 20 questions before I can get to the real meat of what's causing the issue. Whereas if they just recorded a video, which they sometimes will do instantly, I know how to do it. I, I look at the video and it's the same as people send me reference. I'm like, if you send me reference, if you can find it from a video game, that's way more helpful. Like, oh, make a storm. Okay. And they'll send me real, like, real footages uh, or real footage. Footage? Is there a plural to footage? Footages? Um, of storms. I'm like, guys, I know what a storm looks like. I I'm, I'm more than capable of typing in storm, like blizzard, and I can find one. If you can find me examples in the game engine, I can look at it and maybe discover just by watching it how they've implemented it sending me what a blizzard looks like yeah it's okay reference but i, I could do that myself <laughs> why is it broken now most common phrase of any game dev but no, it's super important like like i i like say i i always say about oh you don't need to know uh how well, like how a lot of things work but when you are coming down to fixing things knowing the ins and outs uh can be really really helpful so we're getting our shadow baked here which is really nice I don't have to manually draw that but the biggest problem is this is getting some really weird normals on it um, and i wonder if that could be fixed by coming into just the cannon and doing this and then baking Just baking on the cannon, not the actual rest of it. I'm curious how, how that would work. Oh, 
I think one of the worst parts is um one in, my, in everywhere I work, no matter no matter who I talk to, not even where I work. Um, it, I don't think it's just low res. I think what's going on is it's baking it. Yeah, look, that fixed it. It's baking it from the uh the mesh mesh I put in, and it's thinking it's normals when in reality it's not. Um, so yeah, that that fixed it. Ha! You were wrong, moderate. Um. Base, we want to get the metal. See, moderate's a, a case of a bad QA who, who picks out the wrong, what well, the, the issue is from the wrong, um, wrong side. Like, tells me it's caused by this when it's not, because I know better. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> What? Oh, uh, it almost applied it to everything I wanted. Uh, so the cannons, that color. Let's have a look at this now. Let me get a big picture up. So the cannons, that color. All of this is that color. All of this is that color. Cool. So we can. I'm going to black mask it. I'm going to do it from the ground up. I'll be honest. I was looking at a totally different part of the model. Oh, nice. Even less helpful. Thanks. Oh, wait, that does need to be that, that color. Cool. So that's all wood. Again, we're going to do the wood separately in a bit. I'm debating doing a VR stream after this. So I'm cutting this one a little bit short. Eat my dinner and stuff. Have a slight break. Uh, and then coming back and doing some VR. So I'm really digging VR right now. Oh, did the skulls work? Hold on a minute. Are they low poly but look high poly? Yes. I know when you get close, obviously you're gonna lose some of that, uh, um, some of that magic because it's gonna look low res. I mean, you can obviously turn up to 4K to prevent that. But when you're looking at, if you've walked up to a large asset in any video game before and been like this, and be like, whoa, you'd be like, that's low, <laughs> low resolution. It's it's normal. Never, never be too worried about like stuff like this, like that low res stuff that happens because you're gonna be viewing the cannon from here. This is taking up so few pixels that you don't need that high poly it's nice to have it if you just want to throw it in but but yeah you see that skull looking like that if i now go to the small skull and we delete for example the normal map you'll see all that detailing disappears detailing there give turning gone because it's actually low poly we're just using normals uh to make it look better one thing i would have liked to add it actually is here uh, oh i can't really see it let me yeah. right here where he's like I guess comes in. I think I wanted to add, maybe should have added an extra polygon, extra edge loop there uh, to give it a bit smoother. It's a bit sharp right now, but that's fine. Um, not on my 8K Ultra Big TV. You know what I've realised? I was sitting back on my on my bed and I've, I'm using my Steam Deck and I, some of the games I'm playing are only in 1080p. Uh, to be fair, I'll be setting some of them to 1080p because I've been looking at it. I, I had Crash Bandicoot on and I went from... 4K, which is what my telly is, and I put it down to 1080p, and I was like, I can't even see a difference from back here on my bed. I was like, I, I'm losing all that performance rendering the scene. Is it eight times or 16 times more? Because 1080p, that's four times bigger. Was it only four times more? Wait. How much bigger is 4K? is it just 4k four times uh four times more four times more right so i'm essentially rendering it four times the amount right yeah uh, while laying in my bed playing the game i was like i don't even see all this extra quality I i'm losing four times performance i don't know if the it technically works that way that you lose four times performance but on the tv on the tv like i was my steam deck is plugged into the telly and i was playing games on my steam deck on the telly But, I mean, we've, we've discussed this before on my chat that at the end of the day, if you're not close enough to the TV, you're not even going to see 4K. And there's actually, there's tons of studies on it. Like, uh, what distance does 4K TV matter? Um, between 3.5 to 5 foot on a 40 inch. Mine's a 55 inch. There's, I think there's a data table that shows you. Um, but at a certain distance, you'll just stop losing. Oh, here you go. So, okay. Let's say 50 inch. It says... Uh, the optimal screen distance is about 6.5 foot. Um, wait, in what resolution? 
Oh, that's just 1080p. Hold on a minute. 4K. 4K. 50 inch. 4 foot. I am definitely more than 4 foot away from the telly being there to me laying at the end of this bed. I'm, I'm probably about 7 foot away, which is apparently the optimal distance for a 80 inch TV. Uh, because you, you're, you just can't see the pixels unless you've got super vision. Um, so yeah, like, and I, I definitely can't. I mean, I, I, what? Not only do I not have supervision, I don't have twenty twenty vision, which isn't even supervision. I don't even have good vision. Full stop. <laughs> I've got very bad eyes. So for me, it's it's perfectly fine lowering the resolution. But with uh, yeah, with um. 40, 40 vision. Wait, it's 40, 40 vision actually, I think. I thought the numbers go down. Or, or is that a joke about my bad vision? But yeah, um, it is one of those things where it's just like, is it necessary? And in a lot of times, it's like with a monitor, right? Like if we look at that data chart again, hold on a minute. So your monitor, it doesn't even go as low as what they're saying. Um... 4K monitor optimal viewing distance. I want to see. See, 27 inch, you go. Um, so, with a 40, with a 27 inch TV that's 4K you might start seeing the difference at 52 centimeters or less, which is 1.7 foot, which I'm probably further away from my 2K monitor um, anyways. Whereas from a 2K monitor, you'll apparently really start seeing it at, oops, no, two foot, about 2.5 foot. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense because I am definitely within a 2.5 foot. Um, I, know, I know it's just a joke. I just think it's an interesting topic. Widescreen is nicer. Do you mean like the really big widescreens? Because for some reason, I think like three of the programmers I work with all have these widescreens. And it's really annoying because having to... Because you'll be surprised how many camera issues you can have in a game when you're trying to also make it work for a really wide screen. I've never... Maybe I will in the future. I have no appeal right now to getting a really wide screen. I, it, it does not interest me at all. I say widescreen. This is technically the traditional widescreen, right? A normal 16 by 9. Um, what is the new widescreen? Ultra widescreen, that's it. Ultra widescreen. Uh, aspect ratio. It's... It's what? Can you not give me a nicer format? 2.35 by 1. Um... Can I see that if I times that by 2.35 times 9? So, yeah, that's like saying 21 by 9 versus 16 by 9, which is what we usually... Helps me with motion sickness. Really? Huh, that's interesting. I, I, like, oh, yeah, 21 by 9. Yeah, you go. 21 by 9 widescreen or ultra widescreen. Uh, that's fair enough. I just... I have no interest in it what i what i always find really funny is uh people wanting to get bigger and bigger monitors and stuff uh because oh i want to be a pro gamer i want to be a pro gamer do you know what the average uh pro gamer uses for their monitor size 24 inch because they sit there just looking at it it's it's just like pro gamer monitor uh or what monitor size do pros use it they choose 24 inch monitors for many reasons, including the fact that uh, this monitor size allows for extremely high frame rates and some come equipped with QHD or whatever. Um, and it just, you just can see the whole screen. Yeah, and it says if they don't have a 24 inch, they are at a disadvantage. So I find it really funny when people get these, all this fancy stuff for their monitors when the most, when they, pro gamers have said for years, the most optimal screen size is to use a 24 inch i hate giving comparison videos the lower power density switch versus powerful xbox when it comes to displaying the images they look exactly the same on the screen yeah right i think people get really really overdone by it. it's like when people are like i get 500 fps on this game i'm like but you can't see it 
Like, weirdly enough, this study keeps changing, but how much FPS can the human eye see? Like, 10 years ago when I looked this up, it was like, oh, the human eye can only see 60 FPS. And then a couple of years ago, I looked it up again, and it was about 120 to 150, depending on if you're like a, a pilot, because pilots tend to train their eyes to see... You don't see frames, obviously, in real life, but they, they train their eyes to taking light and basically uh, analyze each bit of information they're seeing quicker. Um, then I looked it up again recently. Right now, it says 30 FPS. We all can see faster than 30 FPS. We all know that. Um, because when we play a game that's 100 FPS, we can see that difference from 60, and we can also see the difference between 60 and 30. So the studies on this keep changing. So it's, it's really interesting. Um, but again, because the biggest argument people have against this is like, oh, but you, you don't see it FPS. Yes, but what we're trying to ask is when do people stop seeing the difference in frame rate when they're looking at a monitor? That's that's sort of more what the question is um, aimed at. Uh, oh, Jesus. Is there a human eye FPS test? It was studied down in 2014. Um, it's like the 4K monitors. Yeah, that's what I, what I just said earlier, Letter Bomb. It's just like people keep wanting to upgrade and upgrade and upgrade. And the thing that gets me is even if, like, watch this. It's like Rocket League FPS 4K. Um... This isn't even 4K. I want to see... Wait, what does it say here? 1080 No, I want to see 4K. Because uh, people in my company keep going like, no, we need to work really fast to 4K really high FPSs, right? 4K Rocket League. Let's go 1080 Ti, which is what I've got, which isn't a bad card. I want to. I want you to bear in mind. It's just a bit older now. Really? You guys don't look at 1080 Ti? Oh, there you go. 1080 Ti, it's the first list. Let's go to the... 109 FPS for Rocket League. That's lower than UE4's default highest FPS, which is 120. 109 FPS. That, like, now let's compare that to a 1080p. 547. Because it's rendering this, the frame four more, like, four times the amount of times that we've got. Like, but yeah, we for some reason there's this obsession at my work right now about like um I wonder if that's set to highest graphic settings. Uh to oh no, we, we need it to work in higher resolutions. Oh, it's running low on this resolution. We want it to be higher. I'm like you you gotta temper your expectations a little bit, you know. Our graphics cards, sure, like the new graphics card series, you get loads of FPS now. Um uh, but our graphics cards aren't necessarily designed, at least the older, slightly older ones, to have supported something like 4k it's it's a very it's quite demanding have you seen how much power the 4090 consumes um like it's very demanding that looks really cool here that's the inside of here like yeah it's just like very interesting to me how people people just want like the best of the best like we're just not ready for it because a lot of times you're not even going to realize it but don't tell people that because they get really offended now you don't really see it that high fps how dare you Oh, I see it this much FPS. Okay, bro. Oh, I have 2020 vision. Don't tell me what I can see. Okay. Means a lot of people are still running older cards, even in uh, even on these. Exactly. I said this at White too, because they were talking about uh, Lumen and stuff. And Lumen, if you look at actually a lot of indie companies talk about Lumen, a lot of them are saying it is not ready. Um. Oh my God! I did not mean to do global blur. Whoops. We were actually like looking at a lot of this um, the other day, and a lot of people are saying that Lumen isn't ready because Lumen is quite performance heavy, and it's also ray tracing. And I think one of the comments one of the companies said was they'd rather have it so their game can work on more variety of cards and stuff like that instead of trying to isolate people out and you not actually be able to use it, which makes a lot of sense. Why would you isolate people out from playing your game because they don't have a, a 10A? It makes me feel cool, yeah. That's it.
But trying to explain... The problem in my company is... Um, it's actually like I was going to say earlier and I never finished talking about. I am not believed by many people, whether it's in the games, whether it's in the industry that I'm working in or talk about any subject. People do not instinctively believe what I'm saying. And it's going to sound really big-headed. When I say something, I've usually looked into it, which means more often than not, if you've asked me a question or something and I give you an answer, I'm probably going to be right and um and that's not me again i'm not trying to be big-headed and saying that i've done the research um it's like when people kept telling me no you're uh oh god let's go down a bit jesus it's like when people kept saying no the reason um your project is running slow is it because of lumen or you're not getting these issues because of lumen you're getting them because of your Post processing your ambient occlusion, your this, that, and people just kept telling me loads of different excuses. And finally, Epic released a video that showed software lumen runs differently than hardware lumen, and that software lumen runs into more issues of light bleeding and the reflections aren't as good. After they released that, magically people started believing me now. Like, <laughs> even though I had full proof that I was getting those issues. And it's very frustrating because, like I said, I am not instinctively believed by people. So I have to really, really have a lot of research prepared before I say, before I start mentioning anything to people. This was AO Steve just made Exactly. Um, but my problem with this is, you know, as long as, like, you'd say, oh, but as long as they realized uh, you're right in the end. That's not the problem. The problem is in these kind of scenarios, no matter what, you're going to be looked at like the bad guy, right? I'm going to be looked like the scumbag who told you you were wrong and had to show you video evidence to prove that you're wrong. And I'm sitting there like, I don't want to be that guy. A lot of time these days, for certain things at work, I just won't say anything and let them discover it themselves because I don't want to be the guy who had to tell you you were wrong, give you proof and look like I'm... Um, some sort of like messiah not messiah but some sort of guy who thinks he's a messiah because he knows things i'm like no i've just researched it i just looked into it man like i did the work <laughs> but no matter what you look like a like just you look like a pompous person that thinks he's smart mate that's not what i'm trying to do I mean, at the end of the day, there's nothing nice feeling about being told you're wrong and then being proven you're wrong. Some people may think, oh, that is pretty nice because I'm learning something. But in the majority of people, they're going to just get frustrated with you that you've uh, you've proved they were wrong, especially in front of other people. But yeah, by default, I'm just not believed very often at all uh, amongst almost anybody. Maybe I'm just, I just don't sound like a believable person. Gotta go watch a bunch of tutorials uh, on something. See you next time and have a good day. Have a good one. Hope you enjoyed while you're here. Oh, right. Do we want it there? No, that's like glass, isn't it? I don't want it there. Uh, that's all metal. That's center part. So this is like painted metal up here. Because there's a lot of like... The outside of it is like brass. Like this whole thing here is brass. But then these parts here, the scratches reveal us uh, a silver underneath. That was very interesting. So I kind of want to do a duplicate of this. Go here, here. I can actually... Oh, these floating off the surface. Uh oh Man. Wait, they're not, though. Oh, wait, wrong, wrong project. No, that's the right project. Oh, no, it is. It, it definitely is. I can see it. Oh, yeah, it's going to be really awkward. Just lift it down. There you go. What about the ones at the side? Are you good? You're good. You are not good. You're inside out. White. Why are you defaulted as inside out? Interesting. Uh, skip down over export. I'm gonna go. 
So this is a separate project for doing this. So you as uh, we go cannon base and we're going to go combine because this will be the last version of it we're going to do. Well, I need to do some ZBrush stuff, but I'll bring that in as a separate um, thing. That shouldn't cause too many issues. Uh, if I do play VR afterwards, is there any specific game you guys want to see me play? Because I need to get installed otherwise. Bro, we want to... Uh, so it's like the whole of this, this, these guys, and this. But then we want to go into the base here and we want to actually change this to... A Oh, well, we'll duplicate first. Cool. We want to change this to a gold. Yeah, that looks pretty good. A, a very tad bit lighter. Like that. Uh, oh, hold on a minute. Oh, hold on a minute. I selected everything. Black mask. You. 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 Not you. You. Uh, I'm guessing you, but the that's going to be an awkward one because I know for a fact that's just going to get messed up. You as well. Then what we want to do is we want to go black mask this. We want to add a generator, and we just want to go edge. Uh, curve. What's it called? Curvature. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Maybe we already asked. Putting a texture inside Blender is so difficult. I don't know. I know a lot of people get away with it, but the problem is, is software like Sussex Painter have so many tools that basically do a lot of the work for you. I know a lot of people might get annoyed at me saying that, but it does. Um, and it does a lot of the work for you. So personally, I just don't think there's much of a point using Blender if you have access to something like Substance Painter. But that's obviously personal opinion. Yeah, that's doing it kind of. More of that, more of that. A little bit blur? No, no blur. Spread that out a bit more like that. Yeah. Problem is, it doesn't have it here. This comes all the way over. I don't know if I'm going to have to manually do it. We'll see. Uh, then what I want to do is I want to do a paint layer. We want to start taking up. I'm going to start taking away. So if I add it... Oh, it'll add it back on. Ah, interesting. So I can add that back on. One little bit at a time. I could paint it, technically. Do you know the... Metal rule for colour? Maybe. Make it lighter for the base because metals come out darker. The thing I could have done here is I could have actually mirrored this and then rotated it to save on a UV space, which I haven't done. Which isn't the worst thing in the world. It may have saved me some um, some detailing that I'm now missing. Where is this? I'm like trying to look on here. What's down here? Is that all this? It is cool. So if I uh, come to here and do this, there you go. We can quickly, with very little headache, get rid of all that. Maybe uh, it's more convenient to do the job inside the same software to avoid export import. Etc. Maybe, but the problem is, it's like, would you use, like, Bl Blender's good software, but Blender doesn't beat other software and things, right? If I wanted to do a high poly, lots of people would pick ZBrush. You can accomplish stuff in, Bl in Blender, but a lot of people would pick ZBrush, right? Um, it's no different than Substance Painter. If, if another software can do the job better and faster, right? Because uh, at the end of the day, it's only inconvenient. It's only inconvenient if the software you're moving it over to is going to take longer. 
But if the software you're taking it over to is going to make the job faster, then it makes more sense to use um, the other software, right? I mean, there's a reason why Substance Painter is an industry standard. Like, you, you don't you don't get big companies uh, come out and say, yeah, we only texture in Blender, right? They, they will come out and say that they do it in Substance Painter, but... And they might come out and say that they model in Blender. Uh... Pretty much choose a super pastel, non-saturated color. Then, yeah, but I'm not doing metals for realism. I'm doing, I, I'm matching it with what it looks like in a concept. So I'm just basically trying to make it look. I, I know what you mean, but if you actually look at the color I'm using, this cut, like this color, comes out a lot darker. I could obviously make it a little bit less saturated, but it's saturated because it's not a real metal. I'm using a, um, I'm making a stylized metal. I remember that argument actually. It's, it's very, uh, very funny because there's a really, really good stylized artist um, who followed a lot of other people's teachings on the internet. And my teacher, he wanted to make his uh, metal because you, you don't even need to make your thing 100% metal, right? If you're doing stylized, the, the, the rules are off the table. No, 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 no. See, you're saying that. No, no, it shouldn't. If you watch, a lot of professionals do it. They will tell you to go between 80% and 100 if you're doing stylized. Because stylized is its own rules. You don't need to follow the rule set of it being 100% if it looks better at a lower percentage. With realism, you do. And yeah, this is an argument uh, this really talented concept, uh, this really talented uh, stylized artist had in my university with my teacher. Because they had that conversation. And yes, metals in a realistic sense are supposed to be 100% metal in any in the PBR system because PBR is physical based rendering you want it to be as much, the whole point is you want it to be physically like you want it to be physically relating to the real world however when you're doing stylized you just need it to look like the style you want and lots of professionals in the industry have talked about this that stuff like um not needed if you there's loads of tutorials out there you can watch as well that'll say the same thing that you don't necessarily need hold on a minute what's the rest of my wait wait where the rest of my thing go? <laughs> wait what did i export it without selecting the whole thing oh, i did I never did any stylized, so I will trust you. I mean, it's not coming from me. It's coming from watching loads of content, the argument they had in university about it, and just seeing professionals talk about it. Um, it's like blood. People vary what they how much metallic needs to be in blood and stuff. But um... Um... Yui, uh, Unreal Engine, should I make all... But I, I had a feeling it was going to come out of that when I started talking. If you realize, I started saying... Oh, actually, I don't know how uh, behind you on the stream, but I started saying about that before you... Um, think you'd... Wow. I must have not typed in, like, a good enough uh, sentence to find some good sources. But, yeah, th there's loads of sources that will say... Don't worry. For realism, 100% like I agree with you. Um, but yeah, don't worry about 100% metallics when doing stylized because sometimes you want things to not look 100% metal. Um, so we're going to put it back in. But it's quite an interesting topic because I used to say the exact same thing. But if it's metal, it should be 100%, right? And you'd think so, but... Um, okay, we've got the rest of it back. Oh, I thought something weird was happening here. It was just the screws coming out. The nails, sorry, not screws. We're getting close to what we're looking for here. Something I want to do... I mean, to be fair, if you think about stylized as well, um, sometimes you're literally manually painting shadows and highlights. That's not realistic. <laughs> 
that completely completely goes against real uh, like how PBR is supposed to work. The whole point to uh, rendering systems with normals is you're supposed to be able to get those highlights and stuff with your normals. That's why in albedo you are supposed to have completely flat with no um, ambient occlusion detailing on it. What I want to do is I'm going to have a shadow that faces upwards. I think that'll look quite nice and help reflect the original uh, content a bit better. Not positional. Water line. Uh, so we want this and then we want that reverse. Oh, is there a reverse button on it? Hold on a minute. Yeah, reverse. Sweet. I want to set that to a multiply so I can have more exaggerated shadows at the bottoms of everything. Oh, first of all, I need to turn all this off. I will add, I'm pretty sure I do have 100% metal on everything right now. I could be wrong. Oh no, I've only got 8%. So I could go 100% and make it more pastel and more desaturated. Something more like that. But that's, if we look at the original, right? It's way too shiny. If we're looking at our original, it looks much more like this. In fact, it may even be a little less metallic. I may want it to be about here. Because the, the biggest difference between what Sonic Metal does versus this is actually quite uh, important to people who don't know the difference. So when Baking Sonic is Metal or when uh, Rendering Sonic is Metal and Rendering Sonic is not Metal, the biggest difference that you're doing is whatever you've got uh, that's Metal is now going to reflect the color that it is rather than the color of the light source. If you have a white... So this isn't fully true. If you've got like a green light source, it'll kind of do a blend. But if you've got a white light source, right? Um, you'll have a and, and, and to be fair if you look at this this doesn't work like a PBR because if you have a white light source and it's shining onto a yellow metal you my monitor just turned off you'll get a sort of yellow goldy reflection right but um, when you've got something that's plastic or whatever if you've got a green plastic and I can actually show this in here right so if we uh, say oh let's make this non-metal uh, make it very rough you will see like the reflections are reflecting whatever so i don't know what scene i've got behind me right now do i change this um i can't remember but you can see the scene behind us whatever you can see that like, when the clouds are it's going like why i think that's like where the sun is it goes completely white because you're reflecting what's behind like the, the environment you're reflecting the colors of the environment when it's not a metallic surface but when it's a metallic surface you reflect uh, a lot more of the colors of what the thing is so for example if i now made this completely red would have this red reflection right but again if we turned off the metallic you'd still get much more white reflections does that make sense it's basically um basically the biggest difference of what it's actually doing yeah i want it to be a bit lower i want it to be a bit more based around there So I need scratches, but I'll do this in fear. I need some bumps over here too, which it should be pretty easy. If I just go into here and we'll get some height. Um, and we'll set this to like this. We'll just grab. Yeah, it's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, yeah. And we'll just. I can't do over a circular amount. So I'm just going to. There's like one at the top, one at the bottom. A bit more than that. There. There. And I assume it's probably like here and here cool uh we can slightly make that a tad bit darker uh we'll multiply on it oh wait i've wait hold on a minute oh put it on top of the color there you go uh, it's a tiny bit darker whoa oh Turn off these things. There you go. Like I can say, why is it doing that? And then if we turn that up, it'll get a little bit darker. So we'll have a tad bit on there to make it so it looks like it actually dents in. Um, and then we can have a filter. And then we can have levels. Nope. Levels. And you can use that if you want to tighten up that a little bit like this. No, not quite that. We actually want to do it this way, right? Yeah, like sort of like this. 
and you can also use this in between sign up either or that so maybe about there sweet cool I will say, uh, I know I keep talking about the metal now. Uh, it's just a really interesting topic. Um, when you are doing realistic, you should definitely keep with that rule. That like you want to try to keep everything um, hundred percent metal if it is metal. There are so many times I've seen projects, uh, even back in university, where people will try their, they will try to instead of fixing the base color, so that way it would work, like I just showed you earlier, they'd instead just reduce the uh, metallic. And when they would move the sun and stuff in their scene. All the metallic stuff would just look wrong because some metals would be only 40% metallic, some would be 70, some would be 90, um, and it would give this really weird effect. Um, I'm coming to here and we want to apply it to this. Is it already on now? I don't know what's going on. Is it really, the curvature is really that harsh in it? I guess I'll just apply it to it then. some curvature on it same with this i want to get some curvature on it maybe i need a different layer um there you go i want some scuffiness on it scuffiness Yep, that's a word. Maybe it is. And I want like the tiniest bit around here, but I can't quite get it without destroying the rest of it, like so. Oh, well, we'll just do that then. That's fine. Um... Cool. We've got like the red ores in here. We'll get the uh oh we're missing the metal in there. So it kinda works. I mean if we do that, then we'll use the other metal in here. Oh, is it actually using both? Oh it is using both. Wait, hold on a minute. Really? Has that got it reverted? I'm more confused. Uh, let's do a duplicate. Deselect like that from here. Add it to here. Oh, black mask. Oh, it's because I've not got it in a folder. Black mask folder. I should have this in a folder. There you go. And I should select the parts. Right, right, right. I've been silly. Uh, select the parts I want in the metal to then go on. Nice. Uh, I'm missing here. Is it all of that? Oh, no, 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 no. It's just... Hold on a minute. Yeah, I will do this one. Oh, there you go. And here, black mask. Curvature. Sweet. Uh, um, I want like this, and then I want it to be inverted. Less sharpness. Like that, there you go. Uh, we don't actually see this part over here. This, the, but I'm just going to probably do that, I think. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, we got all this that's metal too. But all this just stays metal. Like, I literally just need a... 
just, just duplicate. Like, all of this is just metal. Uh, unfortunately, substance requires a monthly subscription. Sounds unfair. And there is not a community edition. So, be like, goodness, have a look. Yes, yeah, it is really true. Um, I mean, other solutions come in different forms of substance painted too, but um, I won't mention those. Um, but yeah, it, it is a little bit annoying. I think it's worth the investment though. I don't think it's too expensive to go for the subscription based service or substance pay for what it offers you and what it brings, what it can bring to your artwork, I think is definitely worth it than trying to. It's really sad to think about because I, I talked about this in university because I was signing university who bought Sussex Painter and his work went from, you know, the average person in the class because we we're using Photoshop and Legacy. Um, Steam. Uh, we were losing... Um, oh, buy it on Steam, right. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea too. But that's a lot of money to dish out as well, Moderate, right, for people who may be students and not much money to spend. Um Admittedly, your student money is supposed to one, it's supposed to go towards food and stuff. But two, if if you if you can buy something for your work, you should probably be spending on that too. So it's it's not that even though I didn't, uh, so I'm I'm kind of throwing myself under the bus there. It's a good reason. It's a good thing to spend that money on. Um, yeah, it was only in class. He his work was pretty average when it came to texturing because he used Photoshop like everybody else. We all used the legacy way, which was Photoshop, which was awful. Then he started subscribing to uh, Sausage Painter, and within days, his stuff went from being, you know, the average in the class to the best. His work was the best when it came to texture work. Well, except for the stylized artist, because he hand painted everything, but that's a whole different reason. When it came to realistic stuff, he was the best. And it felt like he'd found this shortcut. And some people agreed, some people didn't. But it felt like he found this shortcut. But even he agreed, even he admitted, oh, yeah, it made the work much easier and better. Um, so it's annoying to think about that having a little bit extra money can really ele elevate your work. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just mention it because it sounds like Millie might not know about. Yeah, maybe. Is it the name Millie? Millie Potter? My Mile Potter? I'm terrible with names. You can get a free student version of Substance for a year. Oh, you can? Really? Is that new? I never knew that. You know what? I still want this metal to be brighter, I think. We'll just, well, actually, you know what? I want the top surface to be lighter. I might just do a manual thing for that. Um, I want to select this, this. There you go. That way it covers the whole thing. Sweet. I want to exaggerate these a bit too. I want it to be... Problem is, these look like almost white. Um, so in a way, I could always go to metalness which will obviously take away some of the metalness because it's set to zero turn that balance up and the sharpness and then come into our metalness in here and only blend it so it only gives it a little bit less metalness because it's it's really really white um, I, I don't even know how I'm going to reflect that really the only thing I could think about is just doing a duplicate of this layer and setting that to a soft. Yeah, something more like that is uh, much more accurate to what we're looking for. Um, we've got some other normals to do. I want to... What's this doing? What was that underneath one? Oh, there. Right. So the underneath is darker using this one, which I like. I'll probably half it. I mean, is it... Yeah, of course, go for that off. Um, uh, do I want to change it to a certain color? Not really. I just want to get something like that. I want to do a duplicate. I want to invert and have it come over the top. And I want to set it to an overlay. And all we're basically doing is we're making the sort of shadow effects that this asset should have naturally in the engine a little bit more exaggerated than they actually are. And this is actually much smaller area. It's much more like this with a bit more of a blur to it. Actually, we'll do the blur in a separate filter. Cool. So now we've got a little brighter at the top. I think a little bit more than I've got going on. A little bit more like that. Uh, we can tilt it towards more a certain color. I don't think it needs to be more here. No, definitely not. It needs to be more purpley. 
very subtle purple undertones. Yeah, much more like that. Yeah, that's good. And, and the underneath form, we can actually set that one to a bit more redness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's turn that down a tad more. Cool. Yeah, that's way better. My Nick um, is Italian. It stands for Thousand. Oh! Thousand Doors. Oh, okay. Uh, my, you can't make money from it, though. Sad face. I just Photoshop my student ID every year. Oh, nice i <laughs> i shouldn't say this i have student licenses of things uh that they offered me and when i clicked yes i suspected that they'd ask for id and then they just gave me student offer on it and I, i've i've not once corrected them am i bad for that i i didn't expect them to actually let me get away with it i, I don't really know <laughs> really know what to do i'm actually gonna change this color a little bit if we uh i do uh want it a little bit not less saturated i think it's just a bit brighter yeah, yeah yeah mostly a bit bright i think i did slightly desaturate but that's fine i think that and a little i uh, know we'll keep the metallicness um we'll do that with all of them What happened up here? Hold on a minute. Oh my god, that definitely needs to be a bit stronger. Now also... What was causing that? Oh, is that the edge where I just did earlier? Not working for... Yeah, it's not really doing a good job on that part. Wow, the orange is insane there now. We'll, we'll leave it for now. Fix it later. Is there anything metal that needs to be metal? I think we're still missing a couple of bits. I think we got you guys. Now, those scratches are way too much. We're going to have to... Or the uh, way that it fades off, should I say, is way too much. We're going to fix that. Uh, I was wondering if Martin King was his real name or, or if so that's a hell of a name you are teaching people so it's relevant haha or that's used to just give out oh just give out shouldn't I this without a check you just had to find uh you need right my is expensive my is expensive it's honestly it's probably my biggest gripe with my 300 pounds a month when something like blender exists which i think is better I, I can't even say it's better just from opinion. There's just Blender offers more, which in a way universally makes something better. It's not always true, but I, it's hard to root for Maya when they charge so much. No, we don't want that one. This one? We just want the whole thing to be golden. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, we're getting there, we're getting there. Wait, where did my bumps go? Oh, it was that, right. Uh, that's also going to be where we do scratches too, but if we actually look in between these gaps, there's some here. What? Oh, this one. In between each of these, there seems to be one... That makes me also realize I need to get, get this sorted. Uh, so let's do the whole of this. Oh, it actually does a pretty good job here. This actually comes down to like here in the concept. It's really weird. Uh, it's it's drawn crazy weird in the concept that I, I couldn't comprehend how I want to do it. Uh, let's go to the 3D. Uh, so which part of it is it? That's right here. 
So I want to put it in there. Let's see, so let's all this. Wait, hold on a minute. I want to do that with the actual paint itself, right? Yeah, here. No, here. Wait, here. And then the under now, underside seems to be its own separate thing. So if I just do this, I should have to take that off completely. Nice. Then I just need this to be a bit cleaner here. So I could either paint it in one bit at a time using the select tool, or I could paint it manually uh, with a smaller brush. Get a harder brush too. Should have that nice top bit coming over. I kind of just want to do this bit here. There you go. Even like maybe here. I think it looks better just matching. Cool. We're getting closer. Uh, I want to do one more metal one again. And on this one, we'll do a duplicate. Duplicate black mask. So if I select you. It does nothing. Uh... Yeah, so it's working there. Duplicate. Black mask. I did not duplicate, sorry. Duplicate, black mask, white mask, I feel like I'm being an idiot, why is this not, okay, Am I being dumb? Why is that? Oh, whatever. Let's create another one. Wait, why is it only selecting? Oh, right. I am being an idiot. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hey, Mehmet, Mem Mehmet and Formless and Void. How's it going, guys? Monopoly VR, I didn't even see that. Uh, so we want to get that same metal color, which I should still have copied in here. Nice. Now we've not got the metallic effects. There you go. And what I want to do is if you look at a lot of stuff down here, it basically just looks like it's got a uh, an edge on it. So we select everything that looks like it's got that. So we've got it here, here. Yeah, hold on a minute. That's not even got the metal selected on it. Yeah. Same with you. Oh, it's already got that nice. Uh, cool. Have oh, we got a bit that wood selected? Oh, the bit that was inverted. Do you see that? Oh, wrong project. This is the one that I need to care about for actually exploiting. Why is it not? That's clearly inside out, whatever. Just waking up, haha, that looks cool. Thank you, man. Just waking up. What time is it there? I woke up at like 3 p.m. yesterday. 
So we're like, oh, it's 4 p.m. here in, in the UK. I'm like, oh. <laughs> you beat me. Uh, mirrored. Okay. Mm. Oh. It should fix that. It just might take a second to load. I should have saved it before doing that. Mm, should have definitely saved it before doing that. Oh, there you go. So I might have to rebake that, but I can't do it quite yet. We'll look at it in a minute. Cool. Let's move the sun around here. Uh, so what I want to do... Wow, that wood looks really nice up on this angle. I know it's like two of my own horde. Good job, Steve. Uh, but it is nice to see... Um, something come to cover. I just realized this part's not supposed to be wood. Oh, I am on the base. Go back to base. Wow, Substance has just been so slow for me recently. I've done way more complex stuff in Substance over the years, and this is by far not one of the most complex things. Yeah, it's just having trouble. Um, I'll deselect it from here. There we go. Oh, nice. It's mirrored, isn't it? So I don't need to worry about doing the other side. Cool. Uh, what I want to do for the base... Actually, let's get a, a duplicate of the standard wood as well over here. Which is that one? Yeah. We grab that and go into cannon. Well, the wood isn't done for it. At least not the high poly. But we'll just get it in. Get the wood. To get the parts that are wood, just quickly tacked on while we're here. Um, and you guys... Oh, is that also inverted? For God's sake. Why? It's so weird. When did these get inverted? And why, when I correct the invert, it doesn't work? I have to uh, do that, say it's the inside. Inside out, did you recalculate normals or am I misunderstanding? Yeah, I did recalculate normals, but for some reason I have to revert the calculation on those parts. Because it's like usually all you do is control A, reset your transforms, and then you do that. But it's having trouble, and I don't know why. Um just re import one more time, I guess. Save it. Now it's re-import one more time. It is very odd. But then again, if you watch, if, if, if anyone's familiar with my streams, you'll realize a lot of stuff that happens in my streams is very odd and doesn't make a lot of sense. <sighs> I need to beat up the cannon a little bit. Have I done the chips at the front? I should have probably done that. Have I not? What I should have done before importing it, which I might do maybe off stream now, is um, I should have done some of the big cuts in it like this. Oh, it's gonna be really annoying to move that. That's fine. Oh, then I'd need to make that sharp. this and make this very sharp stuff like that just get like the little like actual bits in it which i haven't done um but it shouldn't be too much of an issue because i'm not doing a high poly for it so i can actually do that and re-import it in. i just need to quickly redo the uh this oh what <laughs> oh, right. It's not got my marked seams. I mean, the marked seams, if you've already got it unwrapped for this way, the unwrapped is. Wait. Uh, you know, I redo that. Pop it back into the spot it was in. Try to keep it to the as high, uh, big a scale as I can. 
So it comes down to here. We don't want it to obviously come off of here. And then you can actually scale it straight from the 3D cursor. 2D cursor, technically, because it is in a 2D spot. Cool. And boom, we've uh, UV mapped that little bit there. Uh, there's actually another scratch up here and another scratch over here, so I should probably do all of those, but I'll probably do those, do those off streams. Great thing about traditional me uh, mediums is there's no glitches. True! Imagine, like, painting a canvas. You, like, got your black paint, and you're like, ha! Huh, and it just, like, starts glowing. You'd be like, what? <laughs> I didn't turn up the emissive map on my paint. <laughs> What's going on? But equally, you can't undo, right? If I'm, like, painting a canvas and I... Oh, no, I, I really didn't like that cloud I put in. Oh, well. <laughs> like, you got to deal with it. Where at least in this medium, I could, like, control Z, 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 Z. <laughs> ah, there we go. Back to where we were. <laughs> What's this light bleed? Oh, I left the window open. <laughs> Who did I watch recently? There was an artist recently I watched, and uh, oh no, was it an artist? I can't remember. And they, I think it was nice, and they thought something looked bad, wrong about their painting, and they realized after hours of trying to figure it out, it's just because they had, I think it was literally a light source coming in and hitting it. But they didn't realize, they thought it was like the paint was lighter or something. You've got to paint over it. Yeah, you just got to go again. But then you end up with layers and layers. I don't know if that's actually an issue. I have no idea. I'm, I'm obviously not paying that. Wait, hold on a minute. I've imported the high poly again. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, well, we, we may as well test the import anyway. So I keep forgetting I have to set these to zero. And then on subdivisions and then import. I can keep them at zero. I, should, I don't really have a reason to change that. I still don't get why it's like freezing just opening the fight. It's 30,000 faces. It's not a dense model. It's just substance being weird for me lately. You see, there we go. Now it's the low poly. And it should have the high poly bake on it, making it look high poly. Yeah, sweet. For those of you who have not seen it without the normals on, that's what it looks like without the normals. And then we can also get rid of the ambient occlusion and curvature. That's what it looks like without those. But if you put those on. You get what you get a fake high poly well you, you get what's been done in the industry since normal map baking has been a thing <laughs> it's not like i'm doing anything special here oh, it's, it's like it was... oh you know what i i did uh take away some of the cpus from substance because um i don't want it to lag for the stream so admittedly, it's only using about 75% of my CPU performance. And I have OBS taking up some performance. Have you tried Nomad Sculpt yet? Is Nomad like uh, the tablet one? Wait, oh yeah, you did write Nomad. Is it is it pronounced Nomad? I always feel like I'm saying it wrong. I love normal maps. It's satisfying. It's very satisfying. I should get Nomad. I have. I think it's what you're talking about anyway. Let me unplug my headset. It's made a weird noise. Yeah, I have a Galaxy Tab. It was like 300. I actually got it really cheap. Uh, for, I think 300 quid on eBay. Not pre-owned. But it even comes with a, a Wacom pen. And it's got like a brush. Little brush tip to it. So when you actually draw. Uh, I've heard, yeah. When you actually draw. It, um, it doesn't have that. I like when you're drawing with like an actual tablet. And you're like. It's, it's got that 
plastic on plastic feel. Even though, well, plastic on glass. This, which is apparently a Wacom pen, has a little br little, little brushes at the top, and it makes it feel like you're drawing more on something that's not like a piece of plastic, or it's not from a piece of plastic. It's really good. But I've just not downloaded anything. Like, I've not used this in months. And I should. I should lay in bed when I'm not feeling like getting on my computer and doing 3D. And just try to sculpt something. But it's cool. The case as well, look. Uh, I don't know how much you guys can see. Hold on a minute. Look. So you got, you got this case, right? This pen magnetizes to that. You close it. It's gone. Um, and it just sits there. It's a very good tablet, and when I looked online, it was what everyone recommended if you wanted basically sort of like a um, a budget tablet that's also really good for painting and stuff. Uh, well, I'm just using the pen. Uh, iPads came, always came up, well, almost always came up as number one, but obviously iPads cost significantly more than £280, I think it cost me. It was like the next best thing if you didn't want to get an iPad, and I didn't want to get an iPad. Well, I say next best thing. There was like, you can get like 500, 800 pound Galaxy tablets that are, other Galaxy tabs that are more expensive. Now, what am I doing here? I want to do this one, right? Yes, this. All right, this goes a different layer, isn't it? Uh, is the whole thing metal? It's like a lighter metal when it gets to the center. I'll, um... gonna do that i was like the reverse i want the reverse effect i want the edge to be brighter oh well it's fine we'll keep it like that for now because we're gonna change some of the stuff later cool and then if i um grab this and go into small skull we paste it in there that looks very interesting what's with the white stuff where's that coming from I mean, we, we just want the gold to go across the whole thing. White mask. Uh, but we don't want that white to be in here. It's way too strong. They say you should name your layers. Makes it easier to find things. I disagree. It ruins the fun of trying to find which one's doing what. Ah, there you go. So we want that one. That was good. We want that one. Don't want that one. We could use that one, but we don't want it to... Well, one, we don't want it to the level it's at at all. And two, we don't want it to be that sharp either. We want it to be much smoother. Something like that. Definitely don't want that one. That one, but again, weaker. And some of these dark ones, I think we want a bit weaker. Even get rid of a couple. Uh, yeah. Oh, you know what? The eyes. I'm going to do those manually. The eyes, if we look at the original concept, is very dark. Uh, set to just a normal right now and turn it up so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Mm, look at these drawing skills. Uh, we want a little bit for the nose, I think. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit more than that. Cool. I'll do it for the other side. What, do I have to? No, it's mirror. It's uh, sharing the same UVs. It's not mirrored, but sharing the same UVs. Builds that. We want a little bit of a blur on it. So bring that out. And then we want to set to a multiply. Bring that down to like here. Okay, make sure those aren't on. We want really dark eyes. Like so. And we want it to be much more orange. Yeah, something more like that. Cool. Looking good. Ah, itchy ear. Oh. Uh, Nomad even has pretty much EV rendering now, plus screen space GI, which is epic when you want to get some nice screenshots without needing to import into Blender. I should really do it. The problem is I'm not really someone who uses a lot of sculpting. I'm much more of a box modeler because stuff I make. So I just find, I don't find as many uses as I should. I could probably find uses for it, but I, I will sit down and be like, oh, I'll just, I'll just box model this. You know what I mean? Um, 
but I should really push myself to use it more. So what have I broken here? It's definitely this one. Yeah, well, let's get rid of those for now so we don't have the edge wear on it. We'll add edge wear or the yeah, edge coloring later. Cool, we're looking pretty good. We need to get some scratches on it at some point, but it's fine. Uh, I want to get this part down here fixed, which is... I did it in a different layer, right? It's this one, yeah. Uh, what I want to do is I want to then go generator. I want to go curvature. And hopefully... Oh. Uh, I want to put it in a folder. Oh, you know what? I already had it selecting the stuff I wanted. What I want to do is add the folder now. Copy the mask that we were using in here. Paste the mask in here. Then, black mask this. Uh, generator. Curvature. Sweet. That's what I'm looking for. I want to sharpen this up and I want to hopefully get this kind of effect. Ooh. Yeah, we're kind of close to it. Because what we want, I don't want to have to manually draw X or just take extra time, but what we want is we want this to just do like this, right? Now I'm checking if I can sneakily do that. Ah, it's not grabbing the bottom here. That's really annoying. I mean, I can manually do some stuff as well. I can get it like just as close as possible. We definitely don't want blur. Surprised it's doing like this, like this sort of textured look. Um, it's just a curvature. So we're going to have to do something like that, I think, and then manually do the rest. So we're going into paint now. And yeah, just do some manual cleanup to select the rest for us. I guess it's because this part is counting as uh, ambient occlusion, most likely. Jesus Christ, what am I selecting? Not the cannon, right? Uh, did these parts have it on? Yes. I see what you said in chat. Okay, uh, I thought you, I thought you wrote to start your sentence. K, K, looks like you're close to done. But your name is K. Uh, I am getting closer. Yes, yes, yes. I'm very excited about how it's gonna look. Might even rendering it. Might even render it in like an 8K texture when we're in a probably Mama set. Uh, just to really go, woo, high detail. <laughs> Obviously, you wouldn't have it set to that in a games engine. But as I've been told plenty of times by people in the industry, if you're trying to show Psych off your portfolio, just render it to a higher resolution. Then you're probably going to ever see in the game because you just want to show off your work. Don't worry about. Like, if you get asked, oh, what does it look like in 2K? Obviously, show a 2K version. But don't worry too much when it, like, we're showing work off uh, when it comes to texturing. Which is a weird one to me, because, like I said, like, you'd want to... I thought you'd want to show that you can make a games asset. But every time, it's always just really high-dense uh, textures people make for their stuff. People tend to care more about the poly can, it seems. And at the end of the day, it's a portfolio piece. So you're just trying to show yourself off, right? Oh. <laughs> oh no, we don't have those parts in. Like that, yep. Sweet, well, it's some clean up over here too. So we get, I'll tidy this up probably even more off stream. I'm actually, I did actually do some of it off stream. I did the, a lot of the UV mapping off stream. I hope you guys are proud. I know some people will literally sit there and go, "Ah, oh, I wish I could have seen you do the UV mapping." And to you people, why do you want to watch UV mapping? <laughs> boring. <laughs> I find it boring. <laughs> I'm the one doing it. It's therapeutic. Oh, is it? Uh, this one I can actually mirror. Is that mirroring down the center? Uh, no. No. Yeah, 
Yes. Uh, that looks like it's perfectly in the center, actually. Oh, no, I can't. For some reason, I thought the bottom part, this part wasn't tilted. This part is clearly tilted. So I'm going to do it manually. So here, so here, here, so here. Cool. Mm I think this looks awesome. I want to basically in the middle of this, I do that now actually, just like, um, do something like this. Jesus. God, it is running slow. Kind of what I wanted. Not quite there. That's more what I want. I didn't realize how much it was going to... Oh. Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh. Wrong, wrong way around. Uh, is this a separate... Oh, that's like the whole interior. Kind of what I want. Not quite there, though. I do want it to be darker in general, so maybe I'll do something like that. Um, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. So this part down here is looking closer to what we want. Uh, what I need to do with this as well is come into here and give it a slight, very, very slight bit of height. Okay, maybe that was too slight. Let's times that by 10. Ooh. Ah, that's close. I think it needs to be a smidge, a smidge less. Or even less than that, actually. One five. It's amazing how strong normals look with the slightest bit. Our uh, problem here is I sh like the curvature is making it so we have some of this. But I could go into the painting layer and also touch those parts up. Because realistically, it's not doing this like curved bit here. It comes straight in like that. Straight into there. I could have done this as a high poly and baked it down, but um, I don't think it needed to be. I think that's a lot of extra work for no reason. I think what we're doing now is definitely the way I'd prefer to do it anyway. missing this part here which I'm probably gonna have to go into the textures which is this part which is this part I can't see it on here am I blind oh my god I lagged out there you go is that that no. I feel like there's an easier way to do this and I'm just not doing it. Aha, it's down here. Okay. <laughs> um Right, so what do we want? We want it to come along. First of all, this part's a little bit scuffed, so we'll do it from here to here. Wow, way too thick. Alright, do that again. From here to here. Cool. Does it have it around here? No, cool. We don't need to care about that. We don't need to like do around here or anything. 
Uh, I kind of want that even thicker. I like how I made fun of it. Whoa, it's too thick. And now I'm like, oh, no. Actually, it should be thicker. That other round. There we go. And then we want to do the same on this side, which is... Is it not this mesh? Oh, I separate that out. Interesting. Oh, no. Where is that? Again, I'm pretty sure there's an easier way to find it, but playing Where's Waldo is quite funny. Cool. We haven't got the wood on there yet, but it's fine. Sweet. Now we've got like these big buttons that go on here. Oh, you know what? We'll get this part a bit thicker too. Couple of these guys spread across the place. I thought I was going in then. A bit smaller here. And they actually like go here, 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 here. We've got one here, one here. They're much smaller. Yeah. But they're much smaller in general. I'm going a bit too ham. Uh, what we should also do. So there's actually these patterns in it. Which again, I could have done in a high poly, but I felt like it would just be an easy to paint it. Um, where they need to be underneath this layer, first of all, so that way we paint underneath this metal, which is perfect. And then they're basically just shapes that come out like this, come around. Oh god, what was that? I am kind of aiming for concept art rather than making finished assets, so I suppose sculpting is especially useful for me. Yeah, true, true, true for different reasons uh so being able to sculpt and draw on the go is great sculpting is a standard part of my concept art workflow nowadays that's awesome i wish i could have made sculpting more of a part of my workflow because i think sculpting is way cooler than uh, box modeling personally um but it's just what i what the heck it's just what i personally had more of an affinity for i just i just used uh i just did box modeling and it just felt like good makes sense Jesus Christ, this uh, distance. This bad lazy mouse. Yeah, I said it. It's not a very good lazy mouse. It's uh, difficult to work with. Actually, this needs to be way low down. What am I doing? Yeah, I think it needs to be. Oh, you know what? Turn that off. That makes it easier. And it needs to be almost halfway, it looks like. Halfway comes out to here. Oh, they can see the lines. Halfway comes out to here. Nice big curve. Get rid of some of this. Nice. Hannah, you good? What? <laughs> nice big curve. Comes up. Now the problem is, I should have definitely refocused the cannon in the center so I could mirror all of this. Because now, with it being shifted, I need to now paint all this by hand. Which is very silly. I should have moved it when I was finished. Pen, what is going on? Are you are you running out of batteries? I, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure I charged you up recently. Pen, please. Please. Comes in a bit more. Like that. Looks blotchy. I think that's just the... Oh, no, that is a bit me. Uh, then it's basically just it looks like it's being dented in right it's like um now i don't know how it's going to react on here yeah i thought it'd do that and if we go to the height layer and just change it to normal and change you to normal no there you go like that we should have it so that still goes above it Oh, it does. Mm. 
I guess technically that's right because it, if that's lower down, it's going to be pushing it in even more. Like the height difference here is going to be more intense over here. So maybe that's not as weird as I'm thinking it looks. But I should do this in 4K um, and then put it down to this resolution later. But yeah, then that should basically just be a normal. Hmm. Probably can get away with this. Turn you off. Oh, no, height needs to be on. Definitely way too much height, though. Let's um, turn that down. Same with you, I think. I think you're still too high. Uh, something like that. But then I need to do that on each corner. And then you have this little golden button in the middle of each of them. Oh, paint layer. Yeah, that doesn't look wrong. I guess I could do this a bit more subtle. Yeah, that definitely looks way better, but um, more subtle in the coloring. Coloring. But yeah, I basically need to do that, but across the whole thing, box modeling is satisfying in a similar way to optimize, uh, optimizing code. I've done both before and enjoyed it. I definitely understand the appeal. I, I was just better at it. If I was better at um, the other one, I if I was better at sculpting, I would have definitely picked sculpting. Same with drawing. If I was better at drawing, I would have just become an artist. Um, but despite my trials uh, and the efforts I put in, my drawing skills just never really improved, despite hundreds of hours trying to get it to improve. So I eventually settled on being a 3D artist growing up because I, when I started doing box modeling, I saw more improvement way faster. And I wanted to do it as a living at the end of the day. Um, and it, like, if you want to do something as a hobby, it doesn't matter what you pick. It's just for fun, right? But if you're trying to do it as a as a living, you got to. I feel like you got to pick something that you're going to be good enough at that someone's going to pay you for. And I was, I would never have got to that point um, without a lot of work when it came to drawing, for example, same as sculpting. Whereas I knew I'd get to that point with uh, box modeling and texturing and stuff like that. So it was the area I picked to do uh, one because I really enjoyed it because it's not like I don't enjoy it but two because um, I knew I could make money doing it oh I didn't really sort out that far Stop. Let me move. Thank you. I knew I was going to have to do a lot of manual painting on this, um, so this doesn't really bother me too much. I do need to get those scratches in, though. But I think if I'm going to put those scratches in, I should uh, bake this down. Because what you can do is you can take the normals I'm drawing in right now and then bake those down again in engine. UV mapping is the best part anyway. True. True. What time is it? Okay, almost five. We'll come up at five. And then hopefully I will find a motivation during the week to do some of this off stream. Because I'd like to get it done and we can start back on Simpsons and stuff. Sounds like I've been watching The Simpsons. I, if, for those of you who aren't aware, I've been making The Simpsons as a scene. Um, I got into art education a year and a half ago, although I have been doing it pretty much full time. But yeah, sometimes you need stability before you pursue something else interesting. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, because uh, people have talked about this a lot. And I think the unfortunate thing that some people don't realize when they talk about it some people don't have the choice because some people are like oh if you wanted to i don't know if you wanted to be educated why didn't you just go into education and some people don't have that choice some people don't have the luxury of spending three years 
not earning money um, because they they live a life where they may have to look after somebody or they may have something like they have other things they got to do that they can't pursue a full education and stuff like this and it's the same with what i'm talking about about work it's um some people don't have the luxury to say because <laughs> the good example actually was from university my friend i won't say his name my friend um was so confused the why i was looking for this was after university so no more funding and this friend i will add was a very privileged child but you'd hate me saying that about him it's true it's true it's a privileged child and from what i'm about to sell you you're gonna say oh yeah yeah um and it was the fact that he said to me why are you looking for retail work he went i'm just gonna wait till i can get a job in in, in the industry I, I don't see why you're trying to um trying to work in retail and work places you don't want to work and i looked at him and i was like bro i need money to live i need to pay rent and bills what do you mean why am i looking oh yes because retail is my passion no like <laughs> the, the fact that he was that the fact that his first impression of me going for a, a job like that was confusion just shows that he didn't have to worry about that. And that's great. I'm happy for him that he doesn't have to worry about that. But to not have uh, to not have the realization at all that like the reason I'm probably looking for a job like that is probably because <laughs> Lamau is probably because um i have no choice is crazy that he, he just that didn't that didn't even dawn on him that wasn't even a thought that could have crossed his mind to why i was going for one of these jobs and that is so crazy to me you do sound like a guy who would love retail true i didn't hate my time in retail admittedly um i i always got to uh be on teal and talk to customers and honestly i almost never really I, I got told by my employees that i let customers push me around and i was like do i i just talked to them like how i would want to be uh, spoken to if i was if i walked into a shop i i wasn't like i i, I didn't let them get away murder i was just like oh hello um what can i be today and stuff like that and i never used to walk up to them and approach them when i knew that they didn't want me to and stuff like that and they'd come up to the tills and they'd be like oh is there anything you want to stay and I'll be like, oh, and then, you know, when you go away, I'll be like, oh, have a nice day. Like, I like communicating with people. The amount of times someone would come in and start continuing a story that they talked to me about like a week ago. And one of them called me out on it. And she was talking to me about the story. And I was sitting there like, so, oh, yeah. So he ended up going to uh, this place and he did this and he did that. And then this happened. And she looked at me and she went, you don't remember who I am, do you? And I went, <laughs> I was like, uh, I did not remember who she was. At the end of the day, I was seeing hundreds of people a day. Like, what well, more than hundreds, probably people a day. Like, it, when people, I, sure, I I would have a full blind conversation with them, um, but it was very hard to remember every single conversation I had with people. Cool, that's looking good. We just need to get this detail now around everything, but we're gonna we're gonna call it a day in a second. Yes, looking good. I feel like I'm looking at it and I'm like, it needs to come up more. No, I said like, oh, I'm gonna reduce it. It needs to come up more. Even if it makes that part look a bit weird. But that's looking pretty good. We're almost there. We just need to get the wood done for this, and then we need to get some scratches and stuff in, and we're pretty much golden. Um and then I need to get, like, the, because I want to render it out, I need to get, like, the cannibals in. I need to get some of these glowing effects, some of this goop coming out. Um, and then, yeah, and then we're golden. Maybe some particle effects and the smoke, and then we're golden. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this scre uh, scream. Hope you, ah! hope you guys enjoyed the scream. Uh, if you want to talk to me off stream, I have a Discord that you can find below on Twitch and on, um, on YouTube. And you can always chat with me there ask me questions i'm always trying to i always try to dedicate the time to help or even just chat with people who at me in chat um and yeah i will catch you guys probably next friday i will see you guys then oh luckily now you have a tablet so you could try out other art forms as a hobby true true i should I, i've just got so many <laughs> my hobbies right now are reading playing video games and catching up on movies so if I start another hobby, I just had to, I will have so much backlogs. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye, bye.